Good evening, everyone. And we're going to start the meeting. And it's 7.07 p.m. And we have Nick here. Carol Charo. Nick, pronounce it. <laughs> Nick Chicaro. Chicaro. And public. We have a Robert Perez press. Um, we're going to start the meeting now. Okay. So, Nick, thank you for joining us tonight. And um, we, like I said, this is our first meeting after COVID. And we want to know what's what's on the agenda, on the agenda with sanitation, especially with the weather. Um, they saying that we might have a a wintry winter. It's gonna mm -hmm. be bad. <laughs> so. What's on the agenda? Well, thankfully, every winter I've been I've been in sanitation for six years now, and every winter I've been told it's going to be the worst winter yeah. ever, and it hasn't been so bad yet. So hopefully, we could keep that trend going. Mm -hmm. but, uh, again, my name is Nicholas Chicago, I'm the Assistant Director of Community Affairs for Sanitation. Um, so for snow season, uh, we are you know we've been prepared. We've been doing Sunday snow training. So I don't know if anybody has noticed. Um, there are usually from Sunday's beginning in the end of September, running through about November, there's eight or 10 weeks of snow training where our personnel go out and they redrive the routes with plowed trucks. We always get calls being like, why are there snow trucks out on Sunday driving around the neighborhood? Like, are we, are we going to get snow in the middle of October? They're just making sure that the routes still fit the trucks, the, the streetscape hasn't changed. If there are any issues like last year, for instance, it was really helpful for us because of outdoor dining. So we were able to see which structures might have been too big and let them know, hey, if we're going to be driving down the street with a plow when it snows. You got to, you know, fix your structure to be within the size limits and talk to different business owners and identify locations where there's problems. We all know the city's uh, streetscapes change every year. There might be different projects going on with DOT and DEP that fix up the road. So we've been doing that. We did send out our draft snow plan to all community boards in the Bronx on October 1st. You should have received it. We'll be sending out the final snow plan uh, probably within the next two weeks. Typically it goes out. And if you look at the snow plan, it has a very in-depth um, description of what our protocol is for training. It goes into snow removal priority. So if you're not familiar, it's critical uh, sector and holster routes. It gives you a full in-depth breakdown of what our um, protocol is. And it also lets you know by what community board, how many pieces of equipment you have assigned to you, how many people are in the garage, um, how many plows and spreads, all that stuff. Um, we also, though, I go out and give a lot of presentations about our snow plan and on our website is actually posted in the snow section. It's called snow 101 PowerPoint presentation. That's what I usually give at a lot of board meetings and district service cabinet meetings. I'd be happy to come present it like say, you know, in November, as we get a little bit closer at like a full board meeting where everybody can. Um, ask questions that they might have or give me more, more importantly, what we like to do at a lot of those meetings is get feedback from last year and then listen to what areas are the board's like primary focus where you say these areas usually fall through the cracks. We all know there's areas that fall through the cracks all over the city, you know, whether it be uh, fire hydrants and all these different spots that are like main hubs, bus stops, all this stuff. And we'll collect that information and it just gives everybody a kind of a good look at what our snow protocol is. A lot of people still kind of think we're in the old ways where it's primary, secondary, tertiary, where, you know, we start the presentation off with uh, what the snow plan looked like in 1980, where the, the expectation was if you lived on like an offshoot tertiary residential block, we might not plow your street at six days. <laughs> That's what it says, like expect three, three to six days. And now... We run critical and holster routes and, and all at the same time. It's just 
critical means they get assigned more equipment. So those are like your main thoroughfares, your highways and interstate, your main roads that have schools and hospitals. But the the sector routes, which are just the neighborhood blocks, they get they should be clean every three hours. So it's a much better system. Uh, but I'd be happy to come give a more in depth presentation on that and answer questions at like a full board meeting. But you can always look at the draft snow plan and it gives you a full breakdown of what exactly we do, how we prepare, buying salt, literally everything, the soup to nuts on what our snow plan is. So, yeah, I believe I sent, I believe I forwarded that on. Uh, but if not, if you didn't see it, I could resend it, whatever. Uh, so, Joanne, I'm going to jump out. I'm going to speak. I'll have the I'll leave my computer on though in case you need okay. me. Call my cell. Uh Junior Campbell just showed up. Hi, I Junior. Did put the and yeah, it starts six to unmute Junior. Um so I'm gonna make I'm gonna turn over the host duties to you, Joanne. Okay, so the biggest thing you. is really muting everybody if if necessary. There's a mute all button next to participants. But if you have problems, long story short, just Call me. Um, and I junior. On the, he's still muted. Did I? But uh, if, if you could also review the only thing you should, since you do have a quorum, you should review the last time you had a meeting. Um, if you click on the agenda in the chat, there's a mm -hmm. link to to the um to the January 2020 minutes. So if you could just make sure you. Review those briefly and approve them if you approve. Okay. So when you're done with it's that, it's been a right? while. So it's been a. <laughs> I yeah. have to get um, <laughs> acclimated to this now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Call me if you need to. Thanks. Okay. Right, take care. Junior, Bye. can you hear me? Me too, Junior. Junior Campbell checking in. Good. Thank you for um, joining us, Junior. And we have Nick Caracharo. Right, Nick, mm -hmm. and he's um, just giving us a breakdown of the snow season and what's expected and what are the um, the training and the um, breakdown of um, the breakdown of how they will be handling um, bad weather. <laughs> and he just gave us a description of the um, snow. 101 PowerPoint, right? Yeah, which we are actually just in the process too of updating last year's PowerPoint as we get ready um, to change over to Nightplow. If you're f f unfamiliar with what Nightplow is, it's when uh, this year it's happening on uh, 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 Halloween where we have manpower on all three shifts as opposed to just 90% of our workforce is on the six to two shift throughout the year doing collection and, and cleaning. Um, we stagger the shifts on night cloud just in case there is a weather related um, incident and we don't have to call the whole garage back in. We have like a good a contingency of people that can begin plowing up the trucks, getting salt in the salt spreaders, doing all of that stuff, positioning equipment. Um, so in case there is a weather related emergency, we could be prepared. Uh, everybody sort of remembers uh, I think it was like a November storm a few years ago. I know the Bronx was greatly affected by it randomly, like set a few inches and it mm -hmm. stalled all the bridges and everything. And, uh, that was a are, nightmare. <laughs> yeah, we over prepare more and more now as we get into sort of these unique weather situations. Like we haven't seen, like, you know, even hurricane Ida, we had a lot of, um, roles that we don't typically have. So we're used to. We're trying to like ramp up and make sure that the interagency conversations are better between us and DOT and parks and all of our other agency NYPD. Um, but again, I'll be happy to go through the snow presentation with the full board or with the committee again, if you want. Um, that's not a problem once we have it updated uh, and ready to go. Um, the other thing that changed, I'd say, since the last time you had a meeting was probably the service level. So. When COVID hit, litter, I mean, sanitation's budget was decimated. There was cuts right. everywhere throughout the city, but one of the biggest cuts was dedicated basket service. So litter baskets have dedicated basket trucks that service them, and also they're serviced on the routine uh, collection trucks that are servicing the households in that area. Um, 
the council had chosen in previous years to fund seven day litter basket service throughout the whole city, every community board through overtime funding about $8.6 million. So when COVID hit, that was the first thing to go. So everybody wow. went from seven day basket service to in some areas, they had no dedicated basket service. They were only serviced on the household frequency. And then in some areas it was one or two. So now um, all community boards, except for one or two, I think maybe Staten Island one and Queens 13, which have like the least amount of litter baskets. They don't really, they're just the makeup of their, um, the community boards there have seven day a week. So that, that's huge for the community board. We're storing back to seven day a week. We know there are some areas that probably need even more than that, but um, just to get that level of service back, we also have, uh, they have the precision cleaning initiative. So based out of every borough is, uh, it's called the precision cleaning initiative that was funded where we have, it's basically like our old MLP, which is two sanitation workers and a collection truck going to clean uh, they might be like cutting down weeds. They might be cleaning dumped items and litter, overflowing litter baskets in the district. So um, uh, districts can request from the borough, hey, you know, we need to schedule this precision cleaning initiative to get X, Y, and Z area uh, cleared. It's just extra cleaning resources available to the boroughs, which we hadn't had before, which was huge. Um, and then I know something that Jeremy had asked to talk about was uh, they provided funding for the organics program to restart. Right. So we just announced uh, earlier this month, uh, or last month, technically, it's October now, but that the program would resume and be uh, Brooklyn Community Board 6 had the highest number of signups. They were the first community board to get it. They're going to be rolling out new um, cohorts in November and December. So as um, we get more and more signups, depending on the community board, our uh, internal bureaus will try to map out routes in those districts with the most signups. And then uh, if it makes sense and it's feasible, then they'll be rolling out more routes as the months go on and on. Okay. Um, there is no specific number. Like I couldn't tell you Bronx Community Board 11 needs 3000 signups because it really depends on the actual makeup of the district. So, for example, like there are some signups that are higher in like a Manhattan Community Board, but it's only like three buildings. So we wouldn't we couldn't develop a whole route off of three buildings of service. Meanwhile, you have community boards like. Uh, like Brooklyn Community Board 1, where the interest is high and there's less signups, but it's a lot more individual household addresses. Mm -hmm. So you can develop a route easier that way. Like uh, like 3% or 3,000 signups in BK6 in Brooklyn Community Board 6 was like 20% of eligible households, where we had some council members in Manhattan complain, but it was only 1% of their eligible households. Wow. So uh, we would be happy to come out into to do an event partner in any way we can to spread the word we want all of the community boards to sign up sign up sign up get as many people they want interested to sign up um the more signups there are the better chance that they'll you'll be in the next round of okay. uh, people to to get it so you do have to sign up that's what's different than last year's where our two years ago when they would just deliver the bins they're trying to make it more efficient, trying to generate uh, those that are interested and that if you, we invest and give them the bin and give them all the stuff that they're actually gonna place it out. So you can sign up on our website, uh, myc.gov slash curbside composting. Again, happy to present at a future meeting um, and try and increase signups. I know a lot of people are interested. A lot of people just don't know that they uh, have to sign up for it. They're like, oh, we're eligible. It's coming here. Okay. So we've been doing a lot of targeted messaging to everybody. And uh, yeah, that's what we're, we're hoping we'd be happy to partner on that too. So we just need more signatures. People to sign up. Just need more something. People. What happened yes, with the pilot program in Community Board 8 and 10? 
what were the results of that from years ago? Are you talking about what are the total, like, what were the tonnages collected and, and yes, stuff like that? Yes, the percentages also of the... Yeah, uh, I, I could get that information, but I don't have that information readily. Have, okay, thank you. Readily available in front of me, but I could, I could get that for sure. Okay. So, um, as we talking about the compost, what about the leaves, collections of the leaves? I was, um, ju I was just about to, that was my next thing. So, okay. Bronx Leaf Collection Day are... November, Saturday, November 27th and Saturday, December 11th. We are going to be sending out an email to all the community boards and uh, just keep a lookout for it where you can order the leaf bags for your office. And you could just go on the website, order as many as you want, and we'll send them to your office. If you run out, you could just let me know. We could get you some more. Um, I'm sure in years past, they've had ton of them, like the warehouse was full of them. So I, I doubt there'll be that much of a limit. I know in also in years past in areas that had organics, though, they would just put it out with their organics. They didn't necessarily need leaf bags, but either way, you can order them, have them sent directly to the office. So keep an eye out for that again, Saturday, November 27th and Saturday, December 11th for the Bronx. Thank you. Um, pretty much, we talked about the snow plow, we talked about organic, now we talk about leaves. In regards to um, the garbage pickup, mm -hmm. no, I, as a homeowner, during the summer, I don't know if this has is pertaining to sanitation, but I was sent a, a request to do my curb, my, my, my pavement. I redid my pavement. I sent in for the um, permit and I haven't received any notification. And that was in late or early August. You, in terms of, I'm, I'm a little confused there. What you said, you, you sent in, you had to repave something? I had to do my pavement. I received the notice that my I was had a, a violation in regards to doing my pavement, my curve, my blocks, certain blocks. So I did my I did the repairs. I sent in I went to right here on Westchester to get the permit. But of course that building is closed due to COVID. I had mm -hmm. to send it in the mail for requests. I have not received the notice. I haven't received any notice from them since. I think that might be either a DOB or a DOT related uh, issue because we wouldn't have any anything to do with like sidewalk repair or anything like that. Okay. Second of, oh, okay. Go. Um, when on 180th mm -hmm. in Amistad, there's I noticed they clean, they, they, they clean that whole street, but I noticed every so often, like, especially near the bus stop on 180th across the street from the train station, the precinct, that area can be like, it's like full of garbage and it takes them weeks for them to clean up. Is sanitation responsible or do, is that private? I can have the, di I can flag that for the district. If anytime you notice something like that, you please okay. email me. Um, okay. I can, I would have to take just a double check. You said it's 180th and. It's in Morris Park. It's um. the, the um, I believe that's the transit police station. Right across the street from the train station, opposite side. And sometimes garbage is, is sitting there, that whole area mm. is full of garbage for weeks. Oh, okay. I think I'm looking right at it. Yeah, anything like, oh, is it? Mm, yeah, I think that would pro likely be us to clean. So anytime Sometimes it's for weeks, Nick. Yeah, anytime there's something like that sitting there, don't if you see it and you notice it, please email it to me. Okay. 
that's not a problem. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is that there's also the safe disposal event for the Bronx is October 23rd. And that's in the Orchard Beach parking lot. And that's from, um, you said October 23rd, October 23rd, Saturday. Um, it is from 10 to 4. We are asking residents to register. You could go on our site and register. However, we're not turning anybody away if they uh, if they show up without. The only way that it would potentially impact you is like, say it's so overcrowded, busy, they'll probably take the people first that had registered for the time slot. And they might say, hey, come back in like an hour or just hang out for a minute. We're going to take care of these people. I'll take them. Most, I haven't heard any, we had, the Queens one was last weekend and we had a lot of people say it was sold out and I told them the same thing and they had, they had no issues getting rid of their materials. So we do have, yeah. yeah to, they, to register, you go to um, nyc.gov? Yes, yeah, slash DSNY. You can you also that again? NYC.gov slash DSNY. Great, thank you. And then you look at like uh, services and it'll be like safe disposal events. Okay. And to dispose ev everything, what would you limit it? What's the limitations? It's uh, so you can bring any automotive parts, you could bring medical. Uh, with okay. syringes, you know, paint, uh, pesticides, all that stuff, electronics, pretty okay, much great. anything other than like, you know, a refrigerator where you could put it in front of the house, like anything else that you normally can't throw out with mm -hmm. your regular garbage, you bring there. Okay. Another thing, I know this is off the topic. On, um, I don't know if you call it tree, Tremont, the mule that was, um, there was a mule, a mule, and yeah. people, un unfortunately, you have people who came and basically walked the mule. Mm -hmm. Do you, are responsible for that or can? So usually, uh, sanitation used to a long time ago have a graffiti removal. Um, program. It had since been removed from us and given to uh, EDC. So if the property owner fills out, it's called the graffiti free program. If they fill out a waiver, the graffiti free waiver, they call 311, they'll get mailed to their address, the property owner on file. It'll get mailed to them, they fill it out, send it in, and they'll get put right in the queue for someone to come out and clean. Okay. So it's free of charge. Some people don't want to fill out the waiver for some reason. NYPD also does a lot of that with explorers where they remove graffiti. Um, so sometimes the local precinct might have uh, something scheduled. So you can always check that out with the local precinct too. Uh, but other than that, the easiest way is call 301, they'll mail it directly to your house. Put it back in the mail boom they'll, they'll put it right in the queue it might take a few weeks and in the winter they do pause because the cold weather the spray paint won't stick so you got there's um you know there's a, a little bit of a time crunch now if somebody wants to get it done so. okay informative thank you i know that was out of the topic but since i have you know, a lot of people think that we do graffiti still because we used to do it a long time ago but I don't remember if it was under Bloomberg, but it would once uh, during a round of budget cuts, they took it away from us and gave it to to, to EDC to handle. Okay. Um. Anyone else have any questions? Hello. Uh, I I was letting your board members go first. Uh, isn't it true though that the garbage cans have been or the trash cans have been taken away from the corners? because people have been dumping household garbage in them and there are very few left on the streets? 
Uh, there's definitely not very few left on the streets. There are still hundreds of litter baskets in almost every community board, but you are correct. Um, we've seen an uptick uh, in, a, in abuse of litter baskets from household and sometimes commercial trash, especially in front of restaurants and, and stuff like that. We have, if not some, anything new, our, our cleaning office routinely um, reviews our, our litter basket maps and you could find the map of every basket, what kind of basket is there on open data, where they are. Um, and if you feel a basket should be placed somewhere where there isn't one, and it is somewhere that has high level of foot traffic and there's no basket, you can always send that request to me. I could have the cleaning office review it. But you are right, we, we have removed baskets and in some areas it makes it considerably cleaner. Like uh, in some areas it doesn't work and when we put the basket back and you kind of have to deal with it. Um, but there was one stretch of Myrtle Avenue in Ridgewood, Queens Community Board 5, where the baskets along the whole stretch were just bombed every single day. Households were bringing it there. It's mixed commercial residential. The residents didn't have a place to put their trash in front of the house. The, the owners of the buildings would tell them to keep it inside. They didn't want to cause any trouble. So they were constantly bringing it to the corner. The community board was finally fed up, asked us to take away the baskets and the conditions just on pretty much almost all the corners dramatically improved. Now I've seen areas like we removed some litter baskets in Harlem a, a while back and have since put a lot back because it didn't work out as well. So it's we'll test it out and try it. A lot of times it has to do with the level of service too. There's not enough service for the baskets. It doesn't matter if you have three or four baskets, they'll all be overflowing. But you're right, Robert, we have removed some baskets um, in the last year or so, and, and we have put more out in spots that didn't have them. But if, if people are abusing them and they're causing an eyesore condition, we will eventually uh, remove it and see if that works out as an option. My second point is also that there are some very narrow streets here in Community Board 11, as well as other community boards. Mm -hmm. And last year, the sanitation department bought the smaller trucks. How many smaller trucks are there in Community Board 11 right now? Let me pull up the snow plan and I can give you the total. Bronx 11 has two holsters. So two of the smaller trucks, you've got 38 regular trucks, five front end loaders, two skid steers, which are also um, smaller, which they, they can use on smaller streets. They typically don't, they use, save it for like bike lanes and bus stops. Um, so there's two holsters. Now, what is the total number for the Bronx though? 27 in all community boards. Most of them have one or two. There's a few Bronx 8, Bronx 10, and Bronx 12 have mm -hmm. five each. The rest have one or two. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Um, I have no other questions, honestly. Yeah, again, if, if I'd be happy to come back to talk in more detail about uh, and give like the full snow plan presentation. I could also have BRS, um, which is Bureau of Recycling and Sustainability, come and do like a full organics presentation or maybe table an event and give out literature about signing up. Um, I could drop, I know Jeremy has all my contact information, but I'll drop my email in the chat. Again, if you have any, you. any sort of issue, like you mentioned before on 180, any sort of issue like that, like don't hesitate to reach out, email it to me, you know, take a photo, email it to me. I'll get it to the borough, to our cleaning office to try and get get it cleaned as soon as possible. You know, the community board and its residents are our, our eyes and ears out there. And sometimes our guys are in the field, but they're working, they might miss it, they might not see it. We like I like to elevate it to our borough folks and just let them know it's there. You got to take care of it, handle it. Shouldn't go weeks without being handled, especially if it's under our jurisdiction to clean. And if it's not, we could let you know who historically has cleaned it up in the past, then we could reach out to our intergovernmental partners and get that clean. So okay. great. Um any free items that are being given out for the um, community members out here and the small small homeowners? 
so we usually when we go to events, we bring the reusable bags. We'll probably be bringing the leaf bags to events. Um, we have just a bunch of different literature and decals. Anybody can order our literature and our decals and our signage on our website. Um, okay. if, if you just Google DSMY order materials, you can order any of it. You could download it. And then if we come to any events or the board needs, you know, reusable bags, we're happy to send you guys a box of them. No problem. That'd be nice. Thank you. Well, any more questions? Nick, thank you again for your time. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I appreciate this. I appreciate you coming out. Well, coming on Zoom and, and giving us your presence. And again, thank you. Thank you so much, Joanne. It was nice to meet everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You haven't adjourned the meeting yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone motions? Motion to adjourn, Juna Camber. Excuse me? Juna Camber, a you motion second? to adjourn. Thank you. Okay, guys, calling meeting over. It's 7.39. PM and meeting is over. Thank you again for joining sanitation tonight. Good night. John, good night again. It was a good meeting. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Junior, for showing up. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>